<laughs> okay, so the match itself, Road Warriors versus the Skyscrapers. During the entrance, Teddy Long talks to the cameraman instead of the camera which I thought was a funny production thing. Uh, the Road Warriors have an incredibly close approximation to Iron Man, but on this one I could never quite tell if it was a network overdub or not. It's probably this time where they were transferring the music onto the library music, I think. And then I've made the note that Danny Spivey is just a bad mother lover. I mean, all the stories I've heard about old, old Danny Spivey is... Uh, <laughs> I mean, Dan Spivey, Sid versus the Road Warriors. It's just like Doom and, uh, Doom and the Steiners. You know exactly what you're going to get, and that's not a bad thing. Yeah, there there was one thing that, as I remember sticking out to me, I looked at Moose because we were watching it a few weeks ago, and I said, "Why the hell do you do that?" Uh, there was a point where it went into the four way melee, and Sid and uh, Animal went face to face for a split second. I mean, literally half a second, and started fighting. If they would have let that breathe for seven, eight, nine, ten seconds, the place would have percolated, percolated, and just exploded when they finally started going at it. Uh, you know, it's, it's there's things you catch in hindsight like that that you go, oh man, that would have been an incredible spot. Uh, a, a bit herky jerky towards the end, uh, but again, I think with with you know, the, like in my business, we always talk about does it look like a dance or does it look like a fight? And no fight that I've ever watched in my life, you know, street fight, real fight, uh, ever looked like a dance, right? It was knocked down, drag out, dirty, discombobulated, uh, and, and, and gnarly. And this had that feel at the end, a little bit sloppy for the wrestling side of things. But, you know, you got the road warriors, you know, the underdogs all their life, road warriors, <laughs> and, uh, and, and the Twin Towers. You know, I think they could have gotten a lot of, a lot of distance out of that angle. Had they uh, pushed the right things in, the Road Warriors at this time, and I'll say up front, I love both guys. They were just really good dudes. Mike Hegster was so funny, uh, without trying to be funny. You know, he's just like one of those guys. And, and Animal, I would tug at his chains all the time. We were in a uh, some small town of Santa Motel. He and I would travel together because we didn't party. I like going to the gym with him and that kind of thing. You know, and you travel with people that are similar to you. <clears throat> and this one day, I just kept needling them needling them needling them right and we finally get back in the hotel <laughs> and i needle man's putting me he spins around and throws me on the hood of the car and goes, you skinny motherfucker you better shut the fight it goes off and then he goes into the bathroom and i know exactly what he's doing he's embarrassed at himself right so he comes out and i'm sitting on the end of the bed and i went i'm sorry joe i didn't mean to get under your skin like that he's oh i'm so sorry he's like i got you again <laughs> <laughs> You know, yeah, they, good memories. With the Road Warriors, I've heard like two different versions of this where I can't remember who told me this. And I said, oh, you know, in the early days, how stiff were the Road Warriors. And someone told me, and I can't remember who it was. That's really going to bug me now who told me. And they went, yeah. they were never stiff. They were only stiff if they wanted to be. They were really good workers from the off. And if they stiffed you and then apologized afterwards, it's because actually they just wanted to stiff you a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. I mean, you know, the, uh, you know, J uh, Joe. I know. Uh, I, I wrestled Hawk in single uh, two singles matches in ECW. Uh, never wrestled Joe, but I, I could tell by watching him, uh, much like Bam Bam. And you see those. You know, if a tough guy wants to hurt you, this is what you're going to get right in the right place. This, you know, forearms. It's like you can hit somebody pretty darn hard in, in, in shoulder blades, chest, that kind of thing. Uh, Again, the physics of it, you don't want to hit on any point or any, you know, bony protrusion. Uh, but th they would lay their stuff in, but not so – it's what we would call snug in, in wrestling. And and they both would tell you, if they were both standing here right now, they would say, Paul Ellering. You know, Paul read that into Because Paul knew that if he's going to latch his wagon to these guys, these two big, powerful human beings, uh, they're not going to get much run if they're hurting guys and everything else. And so uh, Paul took it upon himself – you know, in, in wrestling, you know, we often think of wrestling managers as being just part of the act, right? They're just out there as part of the, the gimmick. Paul, uh, Paul Ellering was really their manager. He would negotiate their contracts uh, and would take them, you know, in those early years and, and tell them, like, you can't do this. They want nobody will hire you. And uh, so, yeah, you know, credit that back to Paul Ellering. And, uh, and, and again, I know Mike and, and Joe would both tell you that if they were standing here right now because they told it to me several times.